Hi Shayan, how are you feeling after a complete colossal fuck up with videos right now? How does it feel? Ah, uh, mm, shoot, shoot like, videos um, for four years Tony's, and still fuck us up, bro. Just like um, Tony's recent losses, I would say it's the first of many. So yeah, bro. <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry about this it. This is the Tony losing. This is the Tony losing to Gagey moment where it all went sideways. Yeah. <laughs> what so started listen, all of it off? If we're doing this every week, ain't no thing. I'm glad this it just happens thing. now. Yeah, yeah, so, bro. Bro, the next one's gonna be tight. Okay, so do you, let's do one what, thing. What do you have? What do you have for me? Tell me. What do you have? Lays, bro. <laughs> okay, so what's your team in the prem? Bro, um, I'll tell you a funny story. Uh, it's Arsenal, but like uh, I'm such a fickle football fan. Like I don't have any like sort of allegiance to teams like that. Uh, when I was a kid, I used to support United. Then because my best friend was a Liverpool fan, I became a Liverpool fan. So I had like a United cake on my thirteenth birthday. On my fourteenth birthday, I had a Liverpool jersey, bro. It was mm, fucked up, okay. And then, like, when I got to college, I was like, you know what? I actually like Arsenal and shit. So I started supporting Arsenal, and then uh, I was just an Arsenal fan, still am. But like, uh, they had like this downward spiral for like a decade, right? So it was very tough for me. So I decided, okay, I'm now gonna start supporting Leeds. They're still in the championship then. <laughs> so you know, I was like, bro, like I just, I just want to get used to like loss. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> the Leeds, they got to the Premier League under Bielsa, Bielsa, Biels, Biesla, Bielsa, right? Bielsa, yeah. And, yeah, and then they got relegated again. So now I'm like, okay, Leeds is still my team, but in Prem, Arsenal. <laughs> but like, technically, my favorite team is Leeds, but Prem me Arsenal. Okay, so damn Prem me Arsenal, friend. <clears throat> yeah. In light of that, like I've started watching Premier League again, like um, a little more frequently over the last couple of seasons. Uh, a friend of mine who is a United fan told me, like, please start watching Premier League again last season because he's like, your team is doing so well, they're doing so well. You want to be part of this, okay? That's when I started watching, and that's when City just took over the race. So I was like, fine, bro. Okay, that's how it goes sometimes. Uh, so I've been like following from the start of the season this year. And yeah, man. Now it's a three-horse race. I mean, I guess you've been following Premier League religiously, but like, when was the last time there were three teams that were like within a point or two of each other going into like the last seven, eight games? Oh, like two years ago. Oh, really? It's always like yeah, yeah, yeah. There's always there's by Christmas there's always a time, man. It you know it gets really you know neck to neck. But now the thing yeah. is, I mean, sorry, not just during Christmas, but like you know. Leads get captured and lost because what we also have to look at right now is Champions League football and its impact on the Premier League in these couple of months ahead of us, right? So we have mm-hmm. another month and a half of active football. We've had like you know two months since the holidays break. We also had an international break in between. So mm-hmm. when you look in factor factor on all those things, you're going to see City versus Real Madrid, dude. Like that's yeah. <laughs> that's a that's a t that's a game I'm really waiting for. I'm a huge Real Madrid fan, dude. And um, in Ooh, the prem, right. yeah. I support Arsenal for now, but oh. it's like a seasonal thing. Like I don't, I'm not, I'm not like, I'm not picky on one. It's more like I'll pick on a horse at the beginning of the season. Go like, I, like I want you guys to win. I want you guys to do well, and then like that's the team I kind of go with, right? Got it. So yeah, like and it's never really ever Manchester City. There's no point where I go like, oh, I want Manchester City to win the league. It's mm-hmm. just more like if you don't win the league, like shame, you know, <laughs> <laughs> like well, that's shit. <laughs> So is it safe so, to say you support whoever has the best chance of beating City that season? I mean, to some some extent, like one season, I was just like all. I think this man, I forgot which season this was. This is when Pogba was returning. When Ronaldo came back to United, I was like, mm, United, let's fucking go, you know? Okay. Like that okay. year, I was like, let's support United. And if Ronaldo did well at United, man, for his age, what more could you ask of him? At the age that he came, yeah, and the no, time no. that he was there, he was a top scorer. What? Yeah. <laughs> it's. It's not. It, it it floats. It floats a lot. But uh, right. Real Madrid's the one true team, and uh, <laughs> huh? It's Got it, bro. So like, uh, how how are things in the La Liga right now, though? Like, fill me in. I have no clue. Bro, I'm gonna be as honest with you. In the time that I've had, I have only been following up matches that Real Madrid plays. 
So right now, I know, I know for a fact that there was this game where the most recent game, Real Madrid beat Athletic Bilbao, Athletic Bilbao two nil, and um, mm-hmm. Rodrigo two goals. Fucking just showed some great composure. Like his finishing was fantastic. He just carried the entire game. And the the it's not just a La Liga thing, but it's I can tell you about the Real Madrid thing because that's something at least I've been in more consistent touch with. But with regards to La Liga, Madrid is the clear front runner right now. Cho- I think closely by um, either Atletico. I want to pull this up. I'm not exactly sure. See, okay. I, I'm more in touch with the Premier League because that's where fantasy Premier League is, right? So right. Bro, I've never played fantasy Premier League. Like, take me through it. Like, how does it work? Basically, what it is is that it you choose 11, 15 players for your squad. Okay. And you start at the beginning of the season. It's a whole season long game. And the thing is, you can't change your team every week. You can only transfer okay. one player out and in every week. Otherwise, the more you do, the like you know, there are penalties and shit. You know. Okay. So you okay. you've got to like make a pick and kind of last. It's very okay, high it. stress because sub sub ka to loade lag jata hai bro ek time pe. Matlab jab main hamesha chalu karta hu, hamesha loade lag jata hai. Like I'll uh-huh. I'll start playing FPL. I'll try making these risky gambles because it you set your team every year by August, right? Uh-huh. Uh-huh. And then you're allowed some changes and all these all these wild cards and chips that you can use. But it's just such a uh-huh. long game, and okay. you do it with your friends. You have head to heads. You have bat like you know your bets. Like I'm yeah. down money to one guy. I owe a guy a hundred bucks, hundred Canadian dollars because I lost our <laughs> bet. He's he's a hundred points ahead of me. Um, oh, I I'm going to get two big night outs from my friend because he owes me for two seasons worth of me beating his ass. I get oh, bragging oh, rights man. over another. Like there's this all sorts of shit attached with this. You know that's fantasy Premier okay. League. You've okay. got money. Got you've it. got bragging rights. You've got ego. You've got everything. So oh it's, damn! It sounds very stressful, dude. Season long, yeah, gamble of sorts. Damn, bro. Damn, cool. Maybe I'll suss it out next season. <laughs> you have to, bro. Like it, it just makes everything more exciting because, like for example, if you keep Salah on your team and he scores a goal, you're just so happy. Like Liverpool scores, you never thought, you never really think, but then this one defender could keep a clean sheet. Like you know, if you have an Aston Villa defender, Aston Villa could, yeah. you know, win a yeah. game one nil or go zero zero. You're like. Fuck yeah, they went zero zero. Let's go. You know, bro, I don't, I don't, <laughs> you don't ever hear those words stress, come on. Bro, like, I don't need that kind of stress, bro. It's starting to sound like Adam Sandler from Uncut Gems, my guy. Like, you're giving that. Bro, it was some hardcore shit, bro. Very hardcore shit. So, um, I, I follow Premier League for that. I've followed. It's really fun. I have one more thing I want to talk to you about because I feel like in the next few days, like, conversations about this is going to heat up a lot. Uh, yeah, let's it go. is obviously UFC 300, which is obviously like a very divisive card. Like I think for hardcores, like from from ev- the first prelim to the main main event, it is stacked. Like no other card has been in the past. But you know, like some people have their like trepidations about like the main event. It's not like a marquee event for a lot of people. I respectfully disagree. I want to see how the fight plays out. And uh, I think it's it's going to like cap off like one of the best cards that is we're ever going to see. Um, but what I want to talk to you about, and we can do this for like every fight or we could just do this for the main card. But I want your predictions right now at this point for each of the fights. We're, we're really seeing Davis and Figueroa and Garbrandt. Cody, no love Garbrandt opening an event, that's dude. First okay, fight, bro. look, that's fireworks to begin with. Uh, I, I, yeah. I'm, I'm gonna have to back Figueredo. Uh, I'm, Same. Then for the prelims, my picks are gonna be Figueredo, Jim Miller, Jessica Andraj, and Money Moicano. Because and, and Money Moicano, bro. Uh, I think same Figueredo, Miller. Um, Jessica Andraj, Marina Rodriguez, it's a toss up. I'm just gonna go with Andraj because I like her more. And uh, <laughs> Jalen Turner versus Moicano, uh, I'm gonna go with Jalen. I see, I see, uh, I see Jalen taking this by KO, but I'm just gonna have if I had to have money on someone, I'd have it on Moicano just because cool, you know, cool. I want to see the guy cool, actually, cool. you know, get somewhere <laughs> with his call outs and yeah, his yeah, attitude. Yeah. I'm like, okay, you're talking the talk, if you walk the walk, that'd be pretty damn cool. You know, if he packs okay. that up, yeah, I think yeah, yeah. that's pretty cool for the it. guy. I get it. Um, cool. Let's let's uh, run through the prelims too. Um, so I'm gonna go first for the prelims. Yeah. 
So for Sadiq Yusuf versus Diego Lopez, uh, not like very well versed with either of them in terms of form. So I'm just gonna go with Diego Lopez. Holly Holmes versus Kayla Harrison. Uh, I'm gonna go with Kayla just because I feel like I don't know. Like I haven't seen her fight all that much, but I just feel ah just again just a just a hug, just a hunch. Kater versus Sterling. Mm. I am picking Calvin Kater and Yiri versus Rakic. I am gonna go with Yiri again for that one. So, what, what are your picks, bro? First off, I think Sodik Yusuf is gonna take this okay. one home because you know he's African and you know he's hungry. So, you know, yeah, he's coming for that. What he's you, coming for that. What do you mean he's African? So you know bag. he's hungry. What do you mean? Because you know, <laughs> do I need to spell it out? <laughs> You know, um, man, and I think Kayla Harrison is gonna just wipe the flow with Holly Holm. I, I, I don't think it's gonna even be close. Like Kayla is gonna wrestle for Holly Holm. It's gonna happen. Yeah. Um, okay. And you know, I'm just glad it's a three round fight. But what I can't take here, bro, is Aljamain Sterling versus Calvin Cater being on the prelims. Look, Aljamain Sterling is a former champion. There's no reason for a so fighter of his is... caliber to be put in prelims, even if he's making is... his debut at a higher weight class. You can't put Bo Nickel ahead of him as the pre as the main card that opener. Is, that that is doesn't sit well. Quiet a uh, disgrace, and I feel like that's just like a blatant UFC push for Bo Nickel. Uh, yeah. But yeah, I mean, it is what it is. I'm not I'm not like super mad at because I do think it's a cracker fight to open the main card. But yeah, like you see the rest of the card, and you're like. Um, I can I can make the well. argument that Calvin Cater and Aljamain Sterling would be a great start just because they both are bigger names and 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 Prohashka the the fact that he needs to make up for some fights, dude like yeah. he needs to bring on uh, fireworks as well and you know he's brought it earlier that's the best part like you're not ever yeah. uh, bored during a Prohashka fight, right? Yeah. So yeah. it doesn't make sense to me. I don't understand why they demote either one of these. These are main card fights. Two. And you know, I'd say the same, but like you know, um, there is the Zhang Weili and Yan Shinon fight, so you yeah, can't do much yeah. there. But you know, if I had to reorganize this fight card with, mm-hmm. you know, uh, oh, are we d- done with the prelims? Sorry. So yeah, I, I would take. Um, I, I'm, I think yeah. Aljamain Sterling brings the dub on the on his featherweight debut, okay, and okay. I think I think Prohashka makes this thirty wins. So yeah, yeah. Cool. And so, yeah, like bro, you know, yeah. Rakic has to fight someone of a very high caliber. He fought Jan Blahovic, I believe. Uh-huh. And yeah. the last time he fought Blahovic, he won. Like you know, he lost. And you know, it's not going to get any easier with Prohaska either because he's a sharp striker. No fucking way. Yeah. So, so how would you? Uh, you said you want to rearrange a little bit of this card. So what would you do? Zhang Weili, Yan Shinon goes to open the card. Okay, that's our fifth fight. Oh. Okay. Let's okay. just be honest. Let's just be honest. Okay. And <laughs> then you have not Bonikil, but you have Jiri Prohashka, and you have Alexander Rakic is your number four fight. Okay. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Number three, then you you go to Charles Oliveira versus Armand Sarukyan. Number two, you go Alex Pereira and Jamahal Hill. Number one, uh-huh. baby, you bring in Justin KG. You bring in Max oh, yeah. fucking Holloway. Like, you get them to yeah. shut down Las Vegas fire on bout. <laughs> That's a fucking fight. That's yeah, what yeah, I want to see so because cool. those guys know you know you can expect war for five rounds too from these guys. You can ex- experience something crazy, and in yeah. terms of like the fan hype around each one of these guys, like dude, Jamal yeah. Hill doesn't have fans. Everyone loves Alex Pereira. Everyone wants yeah. Pereira to win. It's like you know yeah. Yeah. it is a huge fight, right? Yeah. But yeah. I just feel like if you look at what's at stake career wise, like you know it's such a big stage for both these guys, Justin KG too. The stakes of Oliveira and Sarukyan is also there. You know, it's a night that mm-hmm. reshapes mm-hmm. light lightweight. Um, yeah, bro. The lightweight division yeah. as well. You know, uh-huh. so yeah. So yeah, ah, interesting, cool. And, you don't, you don't, uh, you don't, quick... because because Gagey Holloway. The problem is you don't know who you want to win the fight. You, you yeah, la- that's true. Both of them are people Every you MMA love. Every MMA fan like is very personally you know? invested in that one way or another. Exactly, like um... Pereira and Jamal Hill. I want Pereira to win. <laughs> Yeah, true, bro. But like, I, I still uh, like. I'm just looking at it impartially, and I'm not mad at it. I just hope like the BMF fight is the co-main at least. Like, I'd like that to kind of feel like the people's main event. Uh, just yeah, because, absolutely. Like, you know, looking back, 
I even if like it's one of the best fights ever, which might change my opinion of this, but like to have the BMF uh, fight as the main event of UFC 300, you know, like it's a hundred marquee event, right? So yeah, at the moment I'm I I I I'm not like too sure about that. So yeah, we have what we have. I'm fine with that. I just like hope the BMF fight is the co-main event, like the people's main event. And then we have like a Pereira versus Hill, which I do think is going to be a cracker. And uh, yeah, like we'll see how that turns out. Uh, jury's still out on that. But before we move on, uh, fight by fight, let's go for your predictions for the main card. You go first and then I'll go. He's like a very American Hamza Chimaev, um, you know, fighter. Yeah. Same pedigree. So I think I think Bo Nickel brings us home he either by a decision. Tough fight in the last one though, right? Wasn't it the dude who uh, was a stand in mm. and like he Bo Nickel knocked the shit out of him? Yeah, yeah, I, Bo, I yeah but like, I'd still back Bo Nickel. And yeah, yeah, yeah. I goes so. without saying I, uh, that you know I I I I'm I'm on um all in on Charles Oliveira against uh, Arman yeah, Sarukian. So like I no think, hate against Arman. Bro, so obviously I have got Bo Nickel as well, but for the Charles Oliveira versus Sarukian fight, I am gonna say something uh, that might get me some hate on the internet. But like, I am not only like I don't 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 just think Arman has what it takes to beat Olives, but I am also like kind of rooting for him, not because I don't dig Oliveira. Like I love that dude. Okay, I love that dude, but. Uh, the lightweight division has a stranglehold at the top. It's Gechi, it's Poirier, and it is uh, Islam, and it is Charles Oliveira. You know, like it is so difficult to break into the top five right now, the top four, uh, so to speak. So I feel like to have a moment where Arman beats someone like Charles Oliveira on UFC 300, it's like a heralding, like a shift in the lightweight division, you know. I think it's going to be a super competitive fight. I wouldn't be surprised or upset if Charles Oliveira won. I would be happy only, I feel. like. Uh, but yeah, like slightly rooting for Arman for this one. Bro, I I completely agree with you. I think there's that's why there's so much at stake at the lightweight division. Just Let's just remind ourselves and everyone listening in as well that, you know, Dustin Poirier pointed something out. You you defend your spot. And Dustin went, went out there and it didn't look good for him in the first round against Benoit St. Denis. And then he turned things around, got like lucky, but at the right time, endured enough to make that right hook hit where it was supposed to hit. And uh-huh. he got that win. He held his spot. He's in yeah. conversations to be the challenge. Okay, so moving on to the... Let's do Zhang versus Yan Xianan first. Who do you have for that? I, 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 I pick Zhang Weili because I don't watch women's MMA. Oh, bro. <laughs> like... <laughs> guy, no, I'm just joking. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's like, it's like, it's like, come on. That's a, that's a card. Are you not going to the toilet and getting food during the first two rounds? Uh, Zhang Weili versus Yan, not necessarily, bro, honestly, <laughs> because I still remember Zhang versus Joanna and that shit, I am glad I watched every single minute. That was fireworks, you know yeah. Yeah, and like, it was on the AZ versus Romero card, and that was a fucking snooze fest. So, you know, like, <laughs> I kind of, uh, and also like, Zhang versus Rose was super competitive, you know, like, the first yeah, fight, Zhang brings you know, it. That Rose Nama on the other finish. hand, you can't get that guaranteed. Like, I think, I think exactly. Zhang and like, brings whatever it. I've seen of Yan Shanan, I think it's gonna be a banger fight. I don't know how long it'll go, but I feel like it's a good fight either way. With that said, I haven't seen that much of Yan, and Zhang Weili is a G, so I'm gonna go with her too. Uh, now coming on, it's a big knife uh, for China. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so um, the BMF belt, Gechi versus Holloway. Give it to me, brother. Dude, I want to see my man Max Holloway win. It's just a personal it's thing. Happen, I, he's bro. been fighting ever since I started watching happen, the UFC. 
It's not gonna happen, bro. <laughs> you know, this, know brother. Like, you know this. Man can want this. You know this is true, brother. It's not. It's not going to happen, bro. You know this. He's Justin Gaethje. He's number one bulldozer in lightweight division, brother. Max Holloway. He, he's coming on surfboard, brother. In lightweight division, he's not going to roll, brother. So yeah, I I love Max, but like. <laughs> I, don't, I, don't I, don't, I don't see it happening. Yeah, bro. Actually, like really after what he did to there, Dustin, man. After what he did to Dustin, what he's done to Fitzy. Um, also, you know that he's most likely only susceptible to you know wrestling and intense pressure. Which, mm-hmm. again, he's a hard hitting guy, and yeah. he can piece people apart. He picked Fitzy apart. He yeah. only felt the Oliver and you know Khabib. Yeah. Um, you know, if he wins this, I think. If this sets up Islam versus Justin, I don't know if that'll happen because it's too. It might be a bit too close because we're looking at June. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, if I mean, can Justin do what no one's done? Can he put away Max Holloway? You know, that's what I'm wondering, bro. Like, I don't see like a uh, a fight like Max versus Dustin, which had happened for the interim belt. I thought one of them would get finished. That went the distance, you know. And I think a Gaethje fight going the distance. Is a treat. Like again, like Gaethje versus Chandler, nobody thought that would go the distance, but it did. You know, so absolutely, yeah. Again, like so, this is a fight like nobody's gonna look away from. Just imagine, just imagine if Max finishes Justin though. Like everyone's expecting, like Justin to finish Max. In Florid shots, never been knocked out. He you needs to do saying? it in Florid shots. Is important. He needs to do it in Florid shots. What shots? Floral shorts. He's campaigning with the UFC floral to, fight, to wear floral shorts. Oh, and yeah, I think yeah. the beautiful thing about this BMF belt is that it, that you know I think it's already been announced that Mark Coleman, uh-huh. Mark the Hammer Coleman, will be the ceremonial person who ties the BMF belt. First, it was Dwayne the, the Rock Johnson, then it yeah. was Jorge Masvidal. Now, you know Mark Coleman. Mm. You know I think that's I like it. that's one of the best suggestions He's made by BMF, Max Holloway. He's an actual BMF. Like wow. absolute hero. Yeah. So yeah, that, I think that's what makes you know UFC 300 so exciting. If that's like the crowning fight, you see both of them, and you know Mark Coleman gets to think, "Fuck yeah, man, that's a main event." Yeah, that's yeah. like the WrestleMania of MMA in a while, you know. Let's... Exactly. Yeah, but you got Max, right? You're rooting for Max. Oh yeah, always. Uh, yeah. It's not, not happening, brother. But anyway, main event. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dude, main how do you know? Like, I again, um. Might be biased because I'm not like the most nerdy Jamal Hill analyzer, so I'm not going to refrain from that. But I've seen Pereira. He got knocked out by a rapper or knocked down. It didn't look good. And um, Wait, who? Yeah, uh, look this up. Uh, Alex Pereira gets knocked down by a rapper. What? Is this some kind of joke? Bro? Lil TJ. By a rapper, what? Lil TJ knocked down Alex Pereira. Okay, let me watch this real quick, yeah? Yeah. Okay. This guy's boxing isn't bad. It's a bit, like, weird. Oh, shut up! There's no way, bro. Bro, there's no way. Bro, I think that's... I don't think that's real. I don't think that's real. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's it's possible, but like, do you think that's real, bro? But he look good. That little TJ look good, you know. Little TJ is not bad. Little TJ, he passed the eye test. Um, but damn, I don't know. See, here's the thing. Like, from whatever mm. I've seen of both Pera and Jamal Hill, is uh, I think both of their uh, head defense is sus. You know what I'm saying? It works for both of them. You know, like when Jamal Hill blitzes and stuff, like he leaves a lot of opportunities open. Um, I just feel like both of them can catch each other and that's not a fight that goes to decision. You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> at, Absolutely. At, like I feel like maybe it's a one or two rounder um, because we saw how Pehra versus Prohaska went and um, yeah, so we saw how Pehra yeah. versus Prohaska went and uh, yeah, like uh, you give Pehra those opportunities. Uh, I think uh, most of the light heavyweights haven't really experienced a striker like Pehra in a long time in their division. So Jamal's got his work cut out for him, but it could go either way. I'm going to go with Pehra. Bro, I completely feel you. And we're looking at 
uh, a guy who has earned his stripes, right, in Jabal yeah. Hill. But, you know, like you said, um, Pereira has got some unreal power in his hand. But so does Jamal Hill, really. He's pretty much no- had, you know, his fair share of knockouts, early yeah. fights. Yeah. Early fight knockouts, late fight knockouts. He's done it all, you know. Yeah. And you're, I don't see this going to a decision at all. It doesn't make sense if you yeah. put these guys in for five rounds. He's going to be getting Pereira in the head a lot. And we've already seen Pereira feel vulnerable from that, whether it's TJ or if it's Izzy. Yeah. So, you know, he... <laughs> Can't believe he's so... TJ is like a fight that Pereira had. Bro. That's hilarious. Yeah, bro. TJ versus Izzy. <laughs> TJ versus TJ versus uh, Pereira. TJ versus... Uh... <laughs> Okay, but do that, you bro. think if but... Pereira wins this, then they're gonna do Pereira versus TJ two at light heavyweight? <laughs> you mean TJ or Pereira versus? Uh, no, I mean TJ two because you're taking it damn serious, bro. <laughs> you, you're talking. Bro, about like Pereira two, like I'm telling you, bro, they have to, they have to run it, they have to okay. give it to, they have to make one more BMF belt for TJ, <laughs> send them on the light heavyweight. Cool, man. but cool. yeah, man. Okay, so yeah, that's that's all our predictions there for UFC 300. Cool. Dude, I'm excited as fuck, bro. This this card is, whether you like it or not, it's a very um important card just because of the number and the significance of how long this journey has really been with this company. Now, was it the best fights? No. Could, could Connor have been on this card? Man, it would have been sick if it was. Um, You know, could John Jones have fought in this card? You know, some of these people who've, you know, been the flag bearers or the torch or, or basically you know i'm talking about involving people who are torch bearers of the ufc yeah. and continue being the torch bearers of the ufc and are we getting to see that kind of heritage like we we saw that with Oliveira and the fight yeah. we see it with max Holloway and justin gg these yeah. guys have fought forever in the promotion we've had you know um uh what's jim miller in mm-hmm. the the early prelims it'd be great to see that sort of experience it'd be great to see a john jones Man, heart wants what the heart wants, you know? Yeah, man. And um, uh, I think when it's all said and done, people will look back on this card as like, oh, fucking cracker from start to finish. Uh, but yeah, we just need to... Let I could have seen O'Malley on this card. I could have seen O'Malley in this card. O'Malley no, as the, you know, I think if O'Malley was in this card, it could be an O'Malley main event, then followed by the light heavyweight event. Then you have yeah. the BMF title. Yeah. Then you have the women's championship. I know. And... I you know, know, yeah, and I think you... like yeah, O'Malley's star power is still like I think there's still something remaining to be tapped into. Like he's got his demographic down, but I feel like he's still like lacking that like mainstream appeal that like Brock Lesnar or Ronda or Connor have had in the past. I think he's got everything it takes to be that though. I definitely yeah. think he has everything it takes if he backs it up with his fighting. Yeah. I think he's doing the entertainment game right. You yeah. know, he's he's talking his talk, but he's walking it. He yeah. put up a beautiful display against Chito Vera. Like, that's Ooh, championship yeah. level fighting yeah. at five yeah. rounds. Yeah. You got to like it. Love to see where this goes with Mirab. That's a stylistic fight. You know, uh-huh. the, you know that can't happen soon enough. Yeah. And yeah, man, like, I understand MMA is not in the days of its old, but at the end of the day, it's still fun to watch, man. That's what we're here for. Yeah. And it's yeah, a good dude, time to let's see honestly. how it fucking happens. Let's go, dude. Let's go. All right, dude, before I let you go, uh, there's easy, one, more thing I want to, one more thing I wanted to talk yeah, to sorry, you about. Yeah. No worries, no worries. Uh, it's all organic, bro. Listen, two minutes. I need to ask you this. You don't follow mm. F1 much, right? I don't, but I, but I, but I have F1 memes, so I'm always huh. watching it. So like, dude, I, like, know what's I don't know if like uh, this passed under your radar, but like something crazy happened in F1 last week. Uh, it basically, this driver... Uh, got his appendix removed. Okay. Yeah, and... Carlos Sainz won, right? Yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh shit, you knew about that, or what? Yeah, yeah. Like if you had, like if I had, if I, if I did my fool's joke on you, bro, I was gonna be like, uh, Carlos got his appendix removed so he could be lighter in the race and he won the race. Damn it. Yeah, that's the yeah. I've seen that. I saw that. Yeah, holy shit, dude. Like everyone's like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, now maybe you'll actually get my appendix removed and I'll win the race. Ah, so... okay. you're a tough nut to crack, Nikhil. I'm gonna get you eventually. Yeah, bro. Him and. <laughs> cool, Him and Lando are boys. That much I know. <laughs> cool, bro. So, like, uh, yeah, I think we're done then. So, what do Easy, we, uh, brother. This is oh, fucking far as shit, dude. No, where can people find you? Bro, at home. Oh. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Internet, you can find me on uh, It's Underdog TV on Instagram. And uh, also, like, check out my shit on Cheyenne Roy. 
but uh, yeah i'm here repping it's underdog tv like i'm trying to make some like wild shit happen with sports coverage so yeah early days but like let's see where it goes dude and uh, i guess some somewhere like very similar for you right fuck yeah bro i'm just happy that project tq has you know something different unique and something that i last used to do with karan and yeah. um, you know whenever i can do it some i want to do it with him so um it's awesome man i barely do mma mma podcast and it's it feels so great getting that sort yeah, of energy bro, out there we could talk for and hours about you know <laughs> it's it's just something you can exactly man and um in terms of just shit chatting about things bro that's just therapy bro man needs it at the end of the at the end of the week yeah so i'm fucking happy shah and thank you for doing this let's with go, me let's go let's go first of many do thank you for project eq bro thank you for project eq brother i will see you another day see you at Take the care, top bro. <laughs>